Welcome, I'm a gaming guru, and this tutorial is just a demonstration about simple RTS movement. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the finished result of this demonstration. Okay, so I have text here that's just for debugging purposes. And <clears throat> so I have the object, you know, the, the controller here that doesn't have a sprite. And this is showing the ID of the object that's been selected. And right now, left being selected, so it's negative four. So here's an enemy. Here's one of my units. Here's another one of my units. Another one of my units, and another one of my units. And then I have some trees. If you can't tell, that's what they are. <laughs> Just them together. So uh, <clears throat> selected a unit, and I'm going to move it. And it even says, you know, it's been selected up here. All right, so. And there's no collision mapping on this at all. So, all right, so let's pretend this is an RTS, and this is a really small game, a really small room. But, okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to select this movement unit and move it over here. But before it gets there, you know, I want to be able to move other units around the map. I don't want to set up a system where I have to wait for a unit to finish moving before I can select another unit. So, I'm going to have this unit go scout over here. And while it's doing that, we have this unit go scout over here. Okay, and <clears throat> so they're doing their own thing separately. And then, all right, if I'm the enemy, so I'm going to have this unit go over here, and this unit go over there and scout some more. All right, so now, how does this all work? Now let's look at the room. So, like, here's the object movement controller. Units, trees, okay, so that's the room. And so with the, the game controller here, I have some variables global.targetx, global.targety, global.selected, global.myid equals no one, so you know, no object is selected at start. And let's try the global.myid, that's why it's negative four in the game start. You know, Nothing selected. So this is this is what this is what does it. So uh, with all, and this is the step of the game controller with all. So we're saying okay with every single game object in the room, and it's going to look over right here. So I'll create. Yeah. This is a unit for the players faction. We have some variables here, and I'll explain them. But right now, just. Focus on this one, faction equals one. So as a variable, faction equals one. And that's the player's faction. This is the enemy car, faction equals zero. Uh, so, okay. So, come back to the object movement controller. We check. This is going to check every single object in the room. If variable instance exists, the ID. Uh, so, this is with all in the steps. So, when you want to check, you're an object, you know, against itself, you use ID and with all. So this is going to, every single object in the room is going to check its own self. So an ID, do I have a variable named faction? Okay. And because I put this in here because like the trees don't have a variable named faction and I, if I did not put this in here and tried to run it, it would have an error. Because the trees would be like, hey, wait a minute. You know, we don't have a variable named faction. So what are, what are you trying to do? Because it, it would try to run this at the local level. Uh, <clears throat> so that's why I put, you know, check. And plus, you, you know, you, what, you know, landscape doesn't need to be part of a faction. So <clears throat> it's going to check. Variable instance exists. So we check if a, if a variable exists with an object, with an instance. If it does, then it's also going to check, okay, does my, you know, checking the game object again, if it passes the first test, and does the faction variable I have, does it equal one? And if it does, then it's a player faction. Now the object car three here, faction equals zero, it's the enemy. So if, uh, so then if, if this isn't, if this does not, 
work for any object, it's not going to run the code here. Otherwise, we just want this code to be run for units of our attraction, which we can select. So, okay, so we pass the test. Image and eagle equals direction. Did that because this uh, public domain sprite I got off open gameart.org. So, and it's facing that way, so that's why I put it. Okay, image angle equals direction. So that, you know, it's good to have. <clears throat> we'll be moving whichever way we are facing. You know, we'll, I mean, we'll, be, <laughs> we'll be facing whichever direction we're moving towards. So, all right, then during the step event, move all still, but this now only applies to what pass, you know, this this test up here. So if we then press the left mouse button, so we're pressing the left mouse button down and the mouse is colliding, again, every game object that passes this test is going to run it. It's going to check, am I colliding? Is the, is the mouse pointer colliding with me? That's, that's what's going to be checked. And it's only if it's a member of our faction if it has a faction variable and that variable has a value of one, which is the player's faction. So, and if it is, and I'll get to this in a little bit, then the global my ID is going to equal the ID. So we're getting the instance ID where you know that that's where the mouse is colliding when we're pressing the mouse button down, and we're putting it, we're putting the instance ID. That collides with the mouse in the global dot my ID, okay. And then let's come down here. I'll get to this in a little bit. But we'll come down here. <clears throat> well, here let's do this. So uh, now, if global dot selected, and notice I have all my global variables uh... with the with the controller object. <clears throat> All right, so if global dot selected is true, and global dot my ID equals something like it's not nothing, then now that something's been selected, when I the next time I press, when I press down, mouse button down on the room, it's going to set. Okay, we're going to go to the you know these are the coordinates now. These are the target coordinates. So when I select something first, global selected equals false. Uh, and then when I when I release the left mouse button, then if you know, there is something selected, and like the global dot my ID is selected, it's not nothing, and global select equals false because it's false when we press the button, mouse button down. Then I look the mouse button up. Then okay, something selected. Okay, so why do we have this here? Because if I didn't, then as soon as I selected something, like if I wasn't selecting the exact center of it, then it would just, you know, start moving right to the mouse right then. I don't want that to happen. I want to select it, lift the mouse button up, press, you know, move somewhere on the map, press the left mouse button, and then it's going to move there. That's that's where it's going to move. So uh, <clears throat> now, okay, this, okay, so now we have a we have something selected so if so every object that's passes test up here it's part of our attraction it's going to check okay is is my id equal to the global dot my id right am i the unit that's selected that's basically what you know we're saying here am i the unit that's selected and is select equals true because you know so we've looked at we've clicked and you know, pressed left mouse button down selected something or clicked on it you know got it added then we lift and we lifted the left left mouse button up right after that and now select equals true so now we can go and press somewhere else on the map with the left, left mouse button and so it's going to grab the, the local variable of this object right here we have my target that's my target y that's why I have you know, we're checking the ID so that the variable, target variable local to our faction unit is now going to equal global dot target x and my target y is global dot target y. So we pass these values under here. Okay. And now we're moving towards, you know, if, if 
Logics ID matches the global dot my ID matches the ID of the unit that's selected. Now we're going to move towards you know, and I put global dot my ID speed. Okay, because you know, you know it's it's going to get the my speed is only right here. Okay, it's going to get this speed. So we can have units with different speeds. Something like that. That's that's why that's there. Uh, <clears throat> notice how this does not have a my speed. It's just because. Mm -hmm. So this is, as it's you know, it's the selected ID. Is that you know that it's gonna we can access that variable there. Uh, this right here is the same thing as saying. Because it is, you know, this equals, you know, if if we're selected, then yeah. So that's that's the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, and so then it goes there. Now, now here in our step event here, uh, it's checking. Okay, am I close? You know, when I get to my target, because we've already passed the. The global target in here so that's fine so we can go select a different spot on the map if we have a different unit selected and this will still travel to its destination okay and then when it gets there uh you would say okay you know and when it gets close we're like, okay I'm, I'm close to my destination i need to stop now uh so i hope you've learned something from this tutorial and so you can use the code and obviously it's very simple it can be improved upon All right, so thanks for watching. Yeah.